Thank you, Iqbal. I, I think I remember vividly. You know, that was 1988. <laughs> Iqbal and a few students, but a uh, few students were there at that time. But the college uh, and the college and the department has essentially doubled by then. You know, so, so we keep track of our graduate students who went to faculty and then do well, and then we have a. We're very proud of them. So we, we treat our graduate students as colleagues. So one, one day we'll <laughs> learn from them. You know, that's, that's, that at least that has been my style. So as colleagues and, and then uh, who develop a good working relationship. And that's been going on. So, uh, so today uh, I have this presentation on advanced power electronics. So we have one hour, uh, close yeah. 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Okay. So, I think I brought a few few slides uh, on what we're doing, and then uh, f uh, on this topic, and then a few on uh, uh, a few of the projects where, where it'll lead to, and so on. So before I s so the outline is so I have a quick introduction to A&M and where we are, and so on, and the power electronics. I'm working with uh, some you know power system folks. Uh, Power electronics enabled microgrid architecture. It's always fun to work with other faculty. They bring in and teach me different things, and then we have exciting, uh, you know, lunch meetings with them, and so on. And the power electronics converts for renewable energy, and and then how that can be applied to drives and some things like that. So we, before we start off, I have a, a quick, quick, quick uh, question answer session. So. So I, I would ask you to do do you use your I I usually I ask my students to use the cell phones in the class so you can use the cell phone, and then um, you need to text to 37. So I think Iqbal tried it already. So the number you text to is 37607, and then in the message you have to put E A S A and then and then a space bar and then do A B C D whatever it is. So let's see what happens. So I'm not actually capturing your cell phone numbers, but <laughs> <laughs> but I do have the capability. So so in my class, I do. I think you're not a fast tech, just texters. You know, my undergraduate class, hundreds of text messages would have come in already. You know? <laughs> so they're always texting <laughs> all the time. So so only two got in, only or oh, three got in, three messages, right? So we got. So this this kind of normalizes with the per, with the numbers and. Um, um, So I have a large number of graduate students, I think, so, so that's good. So, so you can, you can I, I don't think you can vote twice. So you, anybody tried that? <laughs> okay. so, all right, so I'm we're heavily leaning towards graduate students, so that's, that tells me uh, something that I need to talk more research, I think. And then my, I have my second question, which is, I, I've taken a cl class in power, or power electronics. We always ask this question. I think the same thing. So now you don't have to text E A S A. You can just A B C D. You can just do whatever. A B in this case, yeah. So I think since you're a graduate student, everybody took 100 percent. Yeah, everybody took a class. So. Generally, in my undergraduate class, in my university, you know, undergraduate program, they have less, good, uh, or there are there are a few. Okay, so so that there are two more questions, quiz questions, but they have come in between. <laughs> we'll see how that how that goes. So, so the medium frequency transformer is uh, my, the theme. What are we working on, and then. We worked on. We, we continue to work on isolation um, for, for for renewable energy sources, and also more recently, our project on data centers. How to uh, maybe uh, mainly on studies. It's a paper study. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I have slides on that. And then power sharing converter, where you have multiple renewable energy systems um, get connected to the grid. Right now, the the the, the easiest way to do is uh, just to take one renewable energy source. Put a transformer and connect it to the grid. That's just a, a parallel system. So how we can do that? Um, we have uh, projects on power conversion for large wind and subsea, and 
I don't have any slides on smart PV panels, but right now. And then we also we also do some work on high density converters for GAN and SI. I have, I have a few slides on that. So we have, we have a good lab, I think. Uh, you have a high bay and a lot more high voltage things, but we do not have high voltage, uh, medium voltage in the lab. It's, it's kind of safety wise a problematic for us. So we do, we, anything to do medium voltage, we do at the industry location. We have Toshiba uh, in Houston and so on. So we, we, we try to do test our concepts there. So we are, we are, we are established in 1876. Right now we have 62,000 students and so that's where we are. We are uh, 90 miles away from Houston and Austin. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a college station. Uh, so there is a, I, people ask me how did the name come, I think. There was a station and there was a college and they called it <laughs> College Station. The, the, the original town is shown there, it's called Bryan, it's still there, but then the college station has become the university and grew, grew very big. Uh, so engineering, we have we have a big big program, sixteen thousand students. We have similar similar to yours. We have fourteen departments. I think you have eighteen degrees. We have seventeen degrees in the College of Engineering, and then so our go growth plan is twenty five thousand engineering students by year twenty twenty five. So that's why we are growing at six percent rate. So so that's our uh, uh, Iqbal. That's our that's the new Zachary building. Uh, once it's finished it'll look like that and you probably do not recognize it at all right so so we, we, we spend countless hours over there in the lab and so on so that building is being redone and um, so so we are um, in a workforce commission we have a l large growth in uh, in the high school uh, and so on we get more than 15,000 applications so in the freshman we are looking at 3,000 uh, admits or so um, so upwards of that, and then so we plan to grow at the graduate level 15%, mainly online, and PhD 5%. So that's our new initiative, and we are uh, go so we have about 12,000 or so undergraduate students, around close to 4,000 graduate students, and we also have two branch campuses, Texas A&M University at Qatar, where we offer four engineering programs. Um, you know, electrical, mechanical, you know, ke chemical and com petroleum engineering. And then we recently started w working with Galveston Ocean Engineering. We're developing a new new program there, Ocean Engineering. So that Galveston is about about 150 miles from us in the coast. So in growing by, t everybody asks, oh, will you have large classes? We said, no, our dean has made a statement, no class more than 100 students. So obviously, if you do want to do that, you need more professors, more faculty, more resources, and so on. So, sh so uh, we don't want to make the class size larger, because the majority of the class are, are less than that. Uh, and the freshman classes are not more than 100, at least in engineering, not in, um, we can't say that for science and humanities and so on. Uh, we have, uh, right now we have 500 faculty, we're increasing it, um, and then uh, at this, so this is, the, this is the composition right now. And also we have a new line of faculty called professors of practice, so which are industry people. Um, if any of the industry folks want to come back and join us <laughs> after their career, we have this uh, professors of practice. Uh, many, of, m many of the industry folks have come over and working with us. I think Jim Donald from the Duke Energy CEO uh, has he's with us now from here. Uh, that's one name from this region, and uh, so that's our that's a new Zachary building or the engineering education complex we call it. So there's a triangle there. That triangle is the old one. I don't know if you recognize that. So <laughs> and it's getting expanded um, and then built about 500,000 square feet or so. So with that said, our electrical engineering program has has all these sub areas. So we have power and power electronics, and um, um, and so on. So this group, uh, I I I, I kind of work with the. Uh, we we are all in the power and power electronics group, but we also work with uh, analog mixed signal mixed signal group on on power supplies and so on. 
So, so, so getting back into the talk, I'm sure you've seen this slide many times. The grid of today is, is um, all AC system, and everyone is talking about uh, integration of uh, micro, uh, integration of um, uh, several renewable energy sources coming, and then fast charging circuitry for cars and so on. And then many of the uh, projects are on real-time pricing information, and so there are many. So there's a renewed uh, interest in this area. This, uh, in fact, our in our department, the the communications, the computer engineering guys are also participating in smart grid. So, so there's all sorts of. Uh, interdisciplinary knowledge is pouring into this smart grid area. Just, I think it's a good thing for the area. It's just all this new, new, new thinking coming into the area. So, 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 so for us in power electronics, we work at the implementation level where we have the, the system A, system B, and then that's where the power interface happens. And um, so this is one, one concept of what, what happens to the next grid, maybe the red and uh, green lines, you know, the red lines were AC and the green lines were DC, this one concept. Uh, it'll, it'll happen this way or not, we do not know, but that's how it is moving in that direction. Now, in the power systems area, they're, they're looking at communication control of smart grid. I think you have some faculty there as well, working on real-time phasor measurement, measurement and then how do you how do you control the grid? So, so one of my first projects uh, is, is, is with Dr. Lei Shea, so he's um, He's working on uh, 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 something called angle droop control. He and I are collaborating closely. So we have a distribution system operator. So and it's envisioned that you have all these microgrids connected to each other. So he put forward a, a theory ca called angle droop control, where if you, if you can control the point of common coupling in a, in a very dynamic and fast way, then you, you can guarantee the, guarantee the stability. So, um, so, so the so the micro um, uh, phasor measurement units enable voltage angle droop control. So, so the angle droop method, which which Leishe is proposing, um, um, is about power balance and so on. So the more the key part key part is is the, is the power power electronic interface f f with, between each microgrid. So if if I if I go to the implementation aspect of it. So you have a, if you have, so you have a, if you have a DC microgrid, like if this is a DC, um, is there a pointer? Or something? That's okay. Uh, I'll, I'll use my mouse. So if, if there is a DC DC microgrid, then uh, um, this one maybe, no, this somebody's glasses they forgot. Oh, a little mouse. Oh, that's okay. The sufficient battery, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So, if if this is a DC microgrid, then you have a voltage source inverter uh, connected to the connected to the. I think it's out of battery. So sorry. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll just use my mouse. Sorry. Uh, no, they're locks. Oh, oh, there are some. There. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. Don't worry. This Hmm. Is the battery getting it? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it works. Okay. Thanks. Can you see that? Uh, oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. That's pointing in a different direction. So when you have a voltage source inverter connected to the grid through the through this transformer interface, and there's a point of common coupling to the other microgrids, you, you receive the information from PMU, and then you dynamically control that. Through, through through this closed loop control, so I don't have my I, I'm not boring you with equations, but but this is how we are working with the power system folks. How uh, how fast this has to be and so on. So there will be eventually delays here. So the, depending on the switching frequency, the delays in the the phase shifts are not going to be what what you actually program here. So you have to do some closed loop fast iteration to correct that delay, because the loads may be changing. Depending on the load changes, the the output filter. Uh, you know, alters the phase shift. It is different. It's not a direct. Uh, if you go. So that's where the dynamics come, and then whether the dynamics actually affect the grid or not is 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 is, is the question uh, has to be answered. And then if it's a, if it's an AC grid, if it's an AC grid um, uh, microgrid connected to the air, to the other 
uh, other microgrid. Uh, like on this left hand side, you have uh, on this left hand side you have you, you have this uh, power electronic interface within the, all these grids. If that one is an AC system, then then you have a we 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 have this AC AC transformer, which which can shift the phaser dynamically. Uh, you know, dynamically adjust, rotate that, rotate that phaser this way or that way. Uh, again, again, the phaser uh, has to be rotated, and there are there are some output filters which are not shown there. So this is how how we are we are working with uh, collaboration with with the power system folks. On the on the renewable energy uh, side, we are are working on on transformer size reduction. So one of the So one of the approaches is um, you had a, a project with Vestas. I think they had an R&D center in Houston, but now they're no longer there. <laughs> so so they're, I think, reconsolidating. So so if, if there is a, usually there's a, there's a transformer either, either right on the nestle or on the floor. So especially if it's on the top, then the weight and volume of, the, of, that, of that transformer becomes a, an issue. And then if it's a distribution transformer, I, I know NCSU is working a lot on solid state transformer. So in a distribution transformer, you know, the, gr the loads in, in the downtown area kind of grow, and then you need to put in a bigger transformer, and there's not enough space. So the solid state transformer actually can, uh, can help add capacity. So that's one of the motivations. And then also in uh, electric ships and so on. Uh, so, so you're already working on that. So I'm just preaching to the choir why why you need it, and then uh, and then you have the then you have the battery operated. M many of these renewable sources uh, have this uh, disadvantage of intermit intermittent power. So you need you need a battery energy storage. So you need to connect them to the grid. Again, again you have a transformer interface. So, so improving the power density is one of the focus. So um, as you increase the frequency, you know the power density kind of increases. I know you're all uh, you, uh, NCSC are working at this range, hundreds of kilohertz, tens of kilohertz, solid state transformers. So we've been focusing mainly mainly on uh, medium frequency. So some of my examples are medium frequency, and then I'll, I'll just show you what what is the reason, and then at, at least present a, 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 a case for uh, where it can be applied more efficiently. And um, so the more, so the grain oriented silicon steel, you know, prices. These prices can vary in the market depending on the bulk and so on. So these are, these are per unit prices if you see, then if you have the nanocrystalline core for very high frequencies, it's, it's kind of very expensive. So, so the lower cost material is actually uh, grain-oriented silicon steel. So if we can make a transformer uh, with that, it, it'll, it'll be the case. So uh, this core, we've been uh, working with this core, J J JNEX core, which, which has a very reduced, it's a thin steel, special uh, steel with silicon, 6.5% 6 silicon. It has a reduced acoustic noise uh, for medium frequencies around three kilohertz, so, we in, so and then generates lesser heat and provides a better design. So how do we make use of these things? So that's, our, that's been our, our focus. So years ago, we worked on this approach. Um, we're continuing to work on that. So this is a, an AC, AC system. So, all, so, so it's modulated at medium frequency. The sine wave is multiplied by a square wave. And once you multiply by square wave, you do not have any more 60 hertz. You only have sidebands, plus, plus 60 hertz and minus 60 hertz of that frequency you modulate. So, and then no line frequency components in the transformer, uh, in the voltage. And also there is no, uh, a, a, there's not much energy storage component. So you, here you, you need a little smaller capacitor, AC capacitor, to take care of the switching transients. And then, and then you have a leakage inductance issue, so you have to wind the transformer carefully. And then uh, commutation, you, know, you need to work out an algorithm. So if uh, uh, different configurations, depending on the power flow, so if you have a, uh, our IGBTs are coming up, so reverse blocking IGBTs, so the, the, they're nothing but a switch and a diode in series. So if you ask me what is the difference between this and this, so here you have probably two, volt, two drops, and here also you have two drops, but it is, uh, instead of having one plus one, you, you may get one plus, one plus 0.5, depending on how they manufactured it. So, 
So, so you get a better, b better conduction losses in RIGBT provided they're available. Right now they're only available at 600 volts or so. I'm unable to get 1200 volt samples from Fuji and so on. So there, uh, so there are no st energy storage components. So if this could be modified to this way and then, the th and then this also can be configured this way uh, with a very, very extremely small capacitor, weak AC link. Um, and then if the power is, if the power has to flow only, only in one direction, we can sacrifice this, these switches and just put a diode and a very weak AC capacitor and then inverter. So, so that's, our, that's our configuration. Depending on the power flow, uh, we keep doing different things. So, so if that is the, that is the basic um, building block, if the primary side is higher voltage, we keep building uh, converters and then stacking them up. On the secondary side, there may be only one stack. So the advantage of stacking up this way is that you know they have a common core. So even though this primary converter is, looks like that, and then this primary converter is same as that. And, and if there are mismatch, if there are some mismatches in, in the device uh, on drops and so on, so, so those mismatches are, are, are kind of corrected by the, corrected by the, by the, by the transformer coupling. And then voltage, the modules fairly balance themselves. And, and then we have seen that in our lab. And this is, a, oh, this is just a benchmark design. If you focus on uh, this, this 100, oh, 100 hertz transformer, um, 142.2 kVA, and then as you say, take the same core and then design a 60 hertz, operate 60 hertz, you, you can only get 34.6 kVA. This is actually calculations. And the flux density, obviously in a higher frequency, you operate a lower flux density because you need to keep the, finally the efficiency to be 99 or 98% efficiency. So when you add up all the costs, the per unit costs, you get, these two are, these two are operating with the, on the same core, same material except that less, so, so you have similar cost. And then here a 60 hertz transformer with this capacity will cost more. So we think we can use the difference to fund the power electronics. So this is some of our um, uh, work with the, with, the, with, with, the mesh, with the transformer design and so on. We have a very good machine design group. Um, which uses a lot of um, uh, magnetic design software, so that's my s so that's why my students collaborate with uh, Dr. Tolia to use the software, and then we can see here that um, uh, a 60 hertz transformer with uh, that M19 core, uh, the per unit size, and then a 600 hertz transformer with the same M19 core is about uh, uh, you know 0.48 or so, and then mo more importantly, they're like uh, that's it's like 65 percent smaller. Or, uh, than, than a regular transformer. So these are some of our laboratory prototypes. This is like a 3.3 kVA single phase unit, um, 600 hertz, uh, comparable 60 hertz uh, on the top. And then our, our three phase transformer, which we, which we are constructing, which we have constructed, is actually has a five limbs. Contrary to the three-phase transformer with only three limbs, um, uh, we thought we needed five limbs because when you switch this, this winding and this winding and this winding with converters, then the on drops and uh, uh, the, the, the conduction drops as well as the rise time and fall time, there may be mismatches in those conduction drops. So the flux may not all add to zero, instant to instant. And then we'll get some irregular uh, voltages and so on. So we put the fifth limb for for outer limb to provide flux path due to switch rise and fall times. And also we put a search coil there to see what's going on. So, uh, so, so, that's, our, so that, that, that's been our design on, the, on that transformer. Uh, so we have, we have a 7 kVA medium frequency transformer, um, which is, the size wise, it's actually much lower than 60 hertz. And we particularly wound it in a zigzag fashion to, to, so that we, we could test many different topologies with it. Um, so we can, we have a somewhat of a flexible, flexible uh, transformer. Yeah, so we have a couple of um, modules like this. So our, 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 our concept for the wind power energy is, uh, oh, this is a question again. So 
uh, which state in the U.S. has the largest installed wind, wind power? I think I, th I think it's the same same thing. Thirty-seven, six or seven, and then this time you have to say yes, W for Wyoming, and yes, I for Iowa. Somebody's voting for California, I think. Okay. <laughs> so so you need to text uh, thirty-seven, six or seven. That's the number you text to, and then all you have to do text is uh, you have to put uh, this one, right? <laughs> More and more people are for California. Uh, no, yeah, okay. This is everybody's going on Texas. That's good. <laughs> they guessed it. <laughs> they made a good guess that I'm from Texas, and I would put something there. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so the Texas has the largest l largest wind power wind power system uh, installed wind capacity so far. <laughs> Somebody's watching for Iowa. <laughs> And so on. So let me let me move on. Um, oh, they're they're still voting. So you can still keep voting. It's uh, <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> so the, so that, the, that that is essentially coming from Poll Everywhere software. So uh, in a real classroom, of course, with the with the consent of the students, you can actually use their phone numbers and then actually attach it to a grade and spreadsheet and so on. You can do all kinds of things. Um, with it, but here I'm not really looking at your phone numbers. But <laughs> so, so the conventional w wind power system has, as you know, the, the double f double converter, um, and then a diesel link, and then a transformer. We already saw that sometimes the transformer is on the nestle, sometimes it's on the on the bottom, and so on. So, so how do we how do we actually do uh, uh, work on that? So our our concept is that to 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 change the to change the primary side to th this is the, this is shown as a three single phase units going through uh, the AC AC converter system going through the transformer. Now on the secondary side, you, you notice that on the secondary side, I'm not really making a sine wave. So the solid state transformer folks just make the sine wave to sine waves. Th that, that's because they want to apply their solid state transformer everywhere where the regular transformer is. Whereas in, in uh, um, my focus has been that okay you 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 eliminate the secondary converter based on what the application is, so in this in this case I have, I have el we have eliminated the secondary converter, and kept this pr primary converter same as before. Now all I have to do all we have to do is uh, change the algorithm and um, on on this converter, so that when the voltage appears across these terminals to be like that, then the current also has to be same shape, right? So, so I have to emulate a resistance here continuously in a negative way because negative means the power is going back. So that's what this converter uh, converter has been modified to do. Modified the control algorithm. Although when I say modified, to depending on the switching frequency and the no, and, the and then the number of switches there there and then the each switching capability, um, you know, you need to follow the follow this voltage waveform and the current has to be exactly same shape opposite. So that behaves like a negative resistance. So for that, the switching frequency may be uh, need need to be uh, higher. And if it's wide band gap, then it is uh, much better to follow follow such a such a waveform. So the converter essentially on the primary on the secondary side, the converter is 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 not needed for this for this particular <laughs> interface. And then that's our essential central theme. So uh, now, if you want to do uh, Th this is our this is our uh, converter working on um, on the secondary side at 600 hertz uh, with a stacked modules. Uh, this is an open delta concept. I'm only I'm only using two transformers, so it's like an open delta. And then here I have this primary converter running, and then operating operating this in this way. So in the battery energy storage system. Uh, again, once again, this is a conventional approach. You have a utility transformer, uh, filter, and then possibly a three-phase PWM rectifier, which is charging the battery or discharging the battery based on whatever the power system actually demands. So the, again, a line frequency transformer. So our approach has been to do the do 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 very similar things. So, so do the. Um, instead of a wind energy system, now it's a battery. Now the now the the power has to go both both directions. So this one has to be a true AC-AC converter. Uh, 
so in, in, in this way. And oh, this is again the so bidirectional power for the same slide. So the existing hardware remains the same. Uh, we, don't, we do not add a primary on the secondary side converter. We utilize that and then uh, utilize that converter. And then, uh, and then operate this operate this ACSC system. So these are some of the modeling, and then the closed loop control. I'll I'll skip that. And then again, a open delta configuration f for the same same system. Um, so we are we're benchmarking and studying which whether this is cost effective or the previous one is cost effective. And if it's um, um, a three phase system, then then we'll go with the five limb core. If it's single phase, it's it's actually single phase. So, so that's I'll come back to that concept a little bit later. Uh, I have another project on um, uh, offshore wind wind farms and then the DC collection grid. So the motivation for uh, the DC collection uh, of the power and wind power is is higher efficiency. So, so over there, the the conventional approach has been. Uh, you know, use the wind energy uh, generator. That's a wind converter. Just use a st step-up transformer um, in, in a 12 pulse, and, and then create a, a create a higher voltage DC collection grid. So many of the wind windmills uh, parallel connection will will collect it on, on this particular grid. So our approach has been um, this way. Again. Uh, the three lines of the wind generator uh, is th this approach process the wind generator in a single phase manner, single phase rectifier, and then a very weak, d very 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 weak AC link, and then an AC AC converter which which kind of changes to the uh, flip sine wave, uh, whatever frequency that could be uh, higher frequency or lower frequency. So the the, the converter f switching frequency operates it in the medium frequency range. And then you have a power factor correction, a, a two-stage power factor correction, um, which essentially emulates a resistance load, and then it dumps the power on the other side. So the same thing on the on the on on the two other phases. And my and my second approach was to use a use a uh, a rectifier, like a multi multi-stage multi-stage rectifier, and then a and then a resonant converter going into the going into the wind. So these two have been have been um, uh, simulated for for the real conditions for the for, for all the generator parameters and so on, and and then we have obtained good good results there. Now in the uh, for the for the DC to DC converter station. So we are working on a modular multi-level converter, which, which essentially works like this. So we have not published any result on this one yet. So you have uh, this stack of capacitors, and um, each of this converter block it looks like this. So it's trying to balance these two converters. The, so these two capacitors are continuously being balanced. And, and then th this voltage, which comes in, gets added up, and then and then you can, you can get a very good balanced um, uh, system. The only the, the w one thing you will notice that at, at the top level you have one converter. As you come to the center, you have many many more in parallel because the current reading. So the the current actually is going through the th through these converters from the input to the output. It it cannot go through the capacitors because then the, you have a change in voltage. So for the for the photovoltaic power systems. PV uh, systems, um, again, OK, so <laughs> one more question on the PV. <laughs> Who is the big guest, I think? Or, or which largest PV power plant in the US, I think? <laughs> That's what we need to know. <laughs> oh, they're both competing. <laughs> I think some of the students can Google and answer it right away. <laughs> instant to instant. So if you Google and answer it, you'll, you'll find it, and you'll find it that it's, it's California, which has a 590 megawatts <laughs> of power, a single single power station, right? So, 
So I think that's my last one, sorry. <laughs> so, so there's been a tremendous growth in the solar, solar area, in the utility area, both on rooftop and as, as well as on the, on the large, large scale. So, so we worked on a project with, uh, with Danfoss um, uh, inverter systems, so Danfoss, uh, uh, so where, where you have a, the, the Egebec uh, power plant overview, that's like 80, 83, 84 uh, kilo, you know, megawatt uh, solar system. And uh, so we, we obtained all the, all the uh, distance of the cables and so on, although the, the, all, all of that is in a report, we cannot really publish that because of uh, signature confidentiality. But the, I, I can present some uh, basic overview of what, what was concluded. So in, the, in that power system, the, the, this is their conventional uh, uh, PV power form. It's an AC collection grid. That's what they have uh, right now implemented. And each one of those boxes are three-phase inverters. They're essentially Danfoss AC drives. They just took off the rectifier and then they put a slapped a DC, uh, like a boost converter with a, ma with, a, with a maximum power point tracking. And, and then they have a DC link and then you have a three-phase inverter. So when you have a three-phase inverter and all of them are connected in parallel, I think they were 20 kilowatts or 50 kilowatts each. And um, they were all doing droop control and and then that was an AC grid, um, AC collection grid, and 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 then everything was going off through 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 the to the utility. So that's that's their actual implementation. And then um, the main concern was that, that that as you keep collecting more and more power, your cable uh, size and weight kind of increases, and then, and then losses and so on. So. Um, so, so that was the, the, the that was one of the one of the uh, biggest uh, issue. Uh, how could we uh, uh, look at a different configuration? I think that was the question posed. So, so our uh, approach was there that you still use the AC collection grid. That means you have these AC uh, PV panels. You still have three phase inverters. Um, you know, doing that 100 kilowatt uh, converters. And then here you, uh, you operate that same AC drive. We, we looked at the AC drives which they manufacture. They can operate actually uh, easily uh, up to one kilohertz sine wave. So you change that into medium frequency and then apply the medium frequency transformer concept. And then on the, on the, on the secondary side, you're connecting them in series, essentially increasing their voltages. As you keep going, you're getting higher and higher voltages. And then after that, after that, you you got a you got a higher frequency AC here, um, and then that's connected to the 60 hertz through a through a re regular uh, line commuters uh, cyclo converter. So that's a, that was our uh, uh, investigation. We were concerned about the higher frequency cabling, and then we did a quite a bit of modeling, and uh, with using the actual lens of the of the field, and then our overall. Overall conclusion was if you do all this, it it's, it's improves the efficiency by 2% and also it, it, it actually um, decreases the size. Uh, although you may, say, uh, you may say it's a big open field, the size may not matter, but, but um, uh, not only they have to put a lot of roads to, uh, so, so they, could, they, they concluded that it could, it could save some area so you could, you could actually put more, more solar panels. And, but more, more importantly, it was on the, on the cabling cost can go down and then the efficiency could improve. And then uh, without, um, so this connecting them in series and then connecting them to the utility for, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a control problem. Again, it's a big control problem. So if you have different uh, AC voltages connected in series and then connected to this fixed infinite bus, it's, it becomes a control problem. So my student worked on uh, complicated, uh, it's, it's, it's a good control approach where you do the, the, the cyclic converter sets the power and the current, and then these things uh, take care of the voltage. So that way, uh, decouple, then we showed that, that that works well. I don't have, I, I, have, I, can, I can give you some papers on that, but I don't have much slides on this one. So this is courtesy of GE where you have a large DC collection grid. The previous one was the AC collection grid. Uh, where you have uh, DC, uh, DC coming through. So most common uh, power electronics use is the PV modules. And, um, and then you have all of them in series. 
the main issue is if, if you have shading and partial shading, then you have you know, inefficient production of power. So over there, uh, our approach has been to do the uh, multi-zone maximum power point tracker. Uh, a converter which has uh, extreme flexibility. That means you have a uh, one zone and the second zone, third and fourth zone. This is just shown for four zones, but it can actually linearly, this way it can be increased to many, many zones. So here you have a voltage balancing circuit which actually allows this voltage to be different. Uh, and thereby the DC link voltage is maintained at a certain range. So with the optimization of the inverter control and then um, the, the adjustment of these voltages, we show that it, it, it has, it has a much more wider flexibility to take care of the um, uh, uh, partial shading effect and so on. So this, this, this is still being worked. Um, so if you, this is a multiport converter we worked on. If you have a multiport converter, like I said before, if you have a renewable energy source and that's connected to the grid, you take it through a transformer. That's, that's your conventional thinking. So if you have two sources here, you connect them, uh, they're producing DC, you, 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 you have a midpoint ground, so both of them uh, are safely grounded. And then this one, this converter operates like a switching so that uh, each one of those currents can be different. The cu current here can be different than this current even though they're connected in series. And the difference of the current goes through here. That means these two things could be, could, could be oper could operate imp independently. If it's a battery, this current can be charging if this could be discharging, okay? So di the differences go, go through this one. And then you have a DC-DC converter which produces a voltage. So the bottom one is the same thing as, as the top one. Um, so as you come out with these two DCs here, and then the full converter can be, you can connect these two DC sources in series and put one more power sharing, and then, and then there you can get a, a nice DC link, a, a, a DC link which, this is through isolation, you get a higher voltage DC link right here. Now each one of these four devices are completely independent to each other. They're, they're working on, uh, they're, they're, they're in, the currents can be uh, different, one could be charging, one could be discharging, and the control is quite, quite, quite simple, actually. And these converters are, are producing a DC link, and from there, the inverter can just connect to the utility. So that way, you, you, you save individual uh, converters and individual transformers. So that's the motivation of this work. So you, you can connect four uh, converters, and then they, they, they connect to the utility through a higher voltage link, and you may use a higher voltage inverter. Because you're using these components to, to make sure that they're all independently working together. So using this, uh, how much time do I have? I can go faster. So. Five. Ten minutes, five, ten minutes, okay, that's good. So other industrial exp uh, you know, applications for our medium frequency we're looking at is, um, is for drive systems. So, medium f so, so you have the conventional drives, you have a, um, a neutral point clamped inverter uh, run motor drive, and then you have the transformer size is big, and those are the current present day inverter drives. So how do we, how do we change that to, to a medium frequency transformer link? Again, again our, our philosophy has been that after this transformer, uh, at medium frequency with a stacked converter module, and then you get a flipped sine wave waveform. And on the secondary side, don't do anything, no, no, no converter. Just put a diode rectifier. Um, the secondary side converter is not sine wave. It's, it's, uh, it's, it has this shape, and that shape is tilted by 30 degrees, if you can imagine. And then if you work out all this mathematics of how these currents come through and so on, it, kind of, it turns out that, uh, that these switching functions work nicely and then at the input side you get 12 pulse. Um, so, so this converter uh, only, uh, only transfers power in one direction, so, so why use, uh, uh, why use uh, you know, full bridge? Just put diodes in there, save some hardware, and then, and then design it in this manner. So our converter, our, our, our laboratory prototype seems to work very well. Uh, those are the voltages and 
voltage and that's 12 pulse currents. And the same, same concept if you want to do open delta, that means you take two, two, two single phase uh, medium frequency transformers and then shift them, uh, create a f minus 15 uh, this way and then that one, that transformer creates the plus 15 that way and then, and then you just use a 12 pulse which is to the drives. Now this, this concept also works for stacked, stacked medium voltage converter uh, uh, drives where you have different cells in series where you have a big secondary, <coughs> big 60 hertz transformer, a 60 hertz winding. So all you have to modify is this winding and then the core and everything. Uh, everything on this side remains the same. So on this side you could, you, you, all you have to do is modify with, with stack converters and on the other side, keep the hardware essentially identical to what, what you have right now, except that di diodes are working a little bit harder because they have to rectify this one. And, and then, and then sh it should uh, be working fine. So we are c currently looking at a lot of simulations with, with this one. And if the cell is a NPC, it could be done that way as well. So I have a few slides now on Google Little Box Challenge and the, some of the, uh, so we are one of the universities chosen by Google, but we didn't really win it. But th that was a good experience working, working with a lot of GAN industry companies and so on. So, so we, we, we built, we, uh, our concept was a three-phase inverter. Um, this is essentially a two kilowatt module, uh, 400, 400 volts DC, um, um, very high switching frequency. And then, and then our concept was to use a three-phase inverter and then use this in this inverter leg essentially to to balance uh, to balance the the DC link current so that it doesn't have the low frequency harmonic. So our DSP algorithm is pretty good in the sense that uh, instant to instant uh, matching happens through through this calculations. So the load could be nonlinear, linear, um, uh, changing. So you, 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 we, we obtain very good second harmonic f cancellation in a, in, a, in a dynamic way. So uh, I think those are the equations. So that, that's our inverter, um, uh, our GAN um, systems from, the can from, I think, Canada. We had, we, we, we had good luck with them, but our, the drivers were not, not really up to date. So we had at a very high, full power, the drivers were giving us a lot of problems. The Texas the TI drivers d d didn't really uh, give us good strength. But now, I think today you have, you have the, 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 those problems are solved. But at that time, a year ago, there was we, st we still, we experienced that full power issues. Uh, up to 1.5 kilowatt, it worked fine, but as you pushed more and more, the, the drivers actually ha had an issue. And um, so we, we try to address a lot of those, lot of those things. And the power density we obtained was, um, you know, took, uh, what was 60 watts per inch cube. And um, we operated at 200 kilohertz or so. And so, so, that, so that, that was the um, essence of the Google little box. And, and we are also doing some other, some work on GAN systems. Uh, so advantage of high power density, as you, as you all know, is reduced footprint, simplified installation maintenance, and obviously we were looking, everybody's looking for lower, lower cost. So converters are you know, indispensable for, for the growth of renewable energy. And I would say it's a chief enabler of smart grid. <laughs> Although if you talk to a communications guy or a controls guy, I think they'll say that control is a chief enabler. <laughs> You are just a component. That's what Kumar tells me, <laughs> my prof another colleague of mine, uh, who's also working on smart grid. So different people have different views, and and several adaptations um, of medium frequency uh, was discussed here. So that concludes my presentation. I have, a, I can keep going, but I, I think I should stop here. <laughs> Thank you.